Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining our New Moon webinar focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Today, as we move with cycles of sun, we bring our focus to the Sustainable Development Goal 6, Clean Water and Sanitation. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. Just reminding of uh, us of our purpose as we begin our work today and recognizing that our meditation work through these new moon webinars focused on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision and we're formulating thought forms of solution to address the many issues that are facing humanity and the planet. So our intention is to vitalize thought forms that help to create conditions leading to the transformation of our world through the elevation of human consciousness. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and our meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. And as we build our group feel together around this, I'll hand over to Dot who will um, take us through the naming circle. Mm, always a great joy, Rebecca. Thank you. And in the naming circle, we unite our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work. As we unite our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. And the key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment creating the group field, allowing it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So as we have become accustomed to, uh, I will say your name and if you will then unmute yourself and please say your full name and where you are calling in from. Dot Maver, calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. We'll begin with the presenters and then we will uh, go to the list of attendees. Antoinette. Antoinette Tetoy, I'm calling in from South Africa. Welcome, Antoinette. Glenn. Uh, it's Glenn Owen, and I'm calling in from the UK. Welcome, Glenn. Rebecca. Hi, it's Rebecca, and I'm calling in from Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Shelley. No, this is Shelley Ostroff. Calling in from Jerusalem, Israel. Welcome, Shelley. Alexander. Hi, uh, this is Alexander Ilichuk, and I'm calling from New York City, United States. Welcome, Alexander. Anne Marie. <laughs> Anne Marie Scottgard, calling in from Denmark. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Annette Ebert. Annette Ebert, calling in from New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. Annette 
Löffler. It's Annette Löffler from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Thinking you're calling in from the USA. Beata. You may have to unmute yourself at your end. Welcome, Beata. Betty. So just a reminder, you may have to unmute yourself at your end. Welcome, Betty. Birgit. Birgitta Helene Rasmussen, greetings from Denmark. Welcome, Birgitta. Bridget. Hi, I'm Bridget Murphy calling from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Bridget. Catherine. Catherine Payo, calling in from Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Catherine. Cheryl. Cheryl Dinton, Ames, Iowa, USA. Welcome, Cheryl. Dana Marie. Greetings. I'm calling in from South Florida, USA. Welcome, Dana Marie. Darcy. Everybody, this is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome, Darcy. Daniel. <laughs> and company. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Frida. Hello, I'm calling. This is Frida. I'm calling from Ontario, Canada, and actually Georgian Bay, Canada. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, Frida. Gillian. You'll have to unmute yourself. Hello, there we go. I think I've done it now. Yeah. Hello, I'm Gillian Douglas from the UK. Welcome, Gillian. Graziella. Please unmute yourself. Graziella Orlando, Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome, Graziella. Greta. Uh, hello, uh, Greta calling in from Denmark. Welcome, Greta. John. John Sedevi calling from Missouri, USA. Welcome, John. Catherine. Oh, yeah. Hi, Catherine Davison calling in from Texas, USA. Welcome, Catherine. Welcome, Catherine. Lynn. Lynn. Welcome, Lynn. Maria and Bart. Maria Caligari. Bart Cook, both from Carmel, New York, USA. Greetings. Welcome, Maria and Bart. Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina Donadieu uh, from the Arizona Sonora Desert on the Arizona side, Tucson, USA. Welcome, Maria Cristina. 
Meili. Uh, hello, this is Meili Andersson calling in from the south of Sweden. Welcome, Meili. Regina. Please unmute yourself. Welcome, Regina. Regina. Lassa. Welcome, Regina. Tara. Tara Stewart from New Hampshire, USA. Welcome, Tara. Martha Gallagher. From? Martha? From New York or New Jersey, USA. Welcome, Martha. Over to you, Antoinette. Hello, dear friends. It's wonderful to be with you during this sacred time of cancer. The new moon, solstice, the eclipse, where space and time meets. As Philip Lindsay says, where the sun appears to stand still, where we might find a doorway to no time or the eternal, a pause before we move towards the opposite side of the ecliptic. So what does this mean to us? The key words for cancer is, I built a lighted house and therein dwell. And could this be one of the gateways into manifested life? So we welcome you on a holistic journey through the essence of water and sustainable development goal number six, water and sanitation. The month of cancer is the crab. It's got two claws. Dare I call it today, just for today, water and sanitation. Both water and sanitation being equally important for manifested life on earth within the sign of mass consciousness where we sow the seeds of the 17 sustainable development goals to grow their fruit, grow and bear their fruit. The crab clears the ocean of matter which flows around the soul of man. So the esoteric ruler of Kansas is Neptune, the god of the waters. And we find water in three signs, namely in Cancer, where the purifying waters of experience deals only with holes or mass experience. In Scorpio, the purifying waters of testing and trials. And then in Pisces, where waters of purification are applied through daily life and the processes of incarnation. The fish swimming in the waters of matter and finding there its substance and sustenance, shall I say. Moving from the macrocosm now into the microcosm. According to the medical and the health profession, the importance of mindful consumption is emphasized, seeing that a great percentage of our bodies consist of water. During the Arcane School Conference, Dr. Porsche beautifully explained about conscious consumption and how overconsuming in a certain area of the food chain can cause imbalances within the environment. Like for instance, starch or sugars rather than fresh vegetables or protein, just to follow a balanced way of eating. Looking at what's happening to our environment, it is calling out for help and the assistance to deal with water shortages, climate change, pollution, verification of the oceans, proper sanitation, and many more. The former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela said, and I quote, no water, no peace. 
We are here together under one roof, the biggest freestanding structure in Africa, promoting stakeholder dialogue and cooperation, working in our different ways towards achieving a common goal and presenting it collectively to the world. And one of the most important achievements of democracy in our country is the centrality of water in the social, political and economic affairs of the country, continent and the world, committing himself to be a water person, and I unquote, and that everyone need to put water and sanitation high on the social and political agenda. Global Nelson Mandela Day is celebrated on the 18th of July, which used to be his birthday. The campaign calls on all nations to dedicate 67 minutes of goodwill activities towards the cleaning up of rivers, of streams, dams, wetlands, all freshwater resources and the oceans. Mandela believed that each individual has the power to transform the world the ability to make an impact. His birthday is celebrated in South Africa every year by donating 67 minutes of each person's time in the action of a task of goodwill or in the celebration of clean waters for all. So goal six, clean water and sanitation. One in three people do not have access to safe drinking water. Two out of five people do not have basic hand washing facility and more than 673 million people practice open defecation. The current pandemic has demonstrated the critical importance of sanitation, hygiene and the access to clean water for the prevention and the containment of the disease. It is an epic moment, the solstice to bring our attention to holistic water, eclipsing the old systems and structures to birth the essence of water into manifestation, as Lynn Owen will explain to you now. Thank you so much for the honor to be with you. And on the screen, you'll see the impact and the intent of words upon a system like water. Thank you. And over to you, Glenn. Thank you, Antoinette. Uh, just showing my... <clears throat> so it's a pleasure to be here to contribute to this meditation at such a powerful new moon and also on the auspicious day of the summer solstice and the solar eclipse at zero degrees cancer which speaks to home and water i'm excited to hold with this group the potent energy being channeled through our meditation on goal six today at home i'm overlooking the sea in southwest england this is a historic bay it's called the english riviera renowned for tourism. My relationship with the Bay and the spirit of Goal 6 began over 20 years ago. Then I was a construction manager on a major sewage treatment scheme within the Bay. The objective of the project was to clean up the sanitation being dumped into the sea. It resulted in high quality bathing waters benefiting local economy, tourism, the environment and ecosystem. Also back then, I didn't realize that I was beginning to carry and nurture the seeds of a new form of organization. It was the start of a 20 year quest. Now, having returned home to this place for the past few years, I've been writing to capture my work and also to prepare to cross a new threshold into a new cycle of life's journey. The previous cycle was partly defined by the water industry and a significant part of that journey took me to Saudi Arabia where for five years I worked for the National Water Company, perhaps the most spiritual, but also the most dysfunctional of organisations. It was a rare blessing for a Western advisor to work directly with the native Saudis. This gave me a deep and unique insight 
into transformation of organization and management, and also the water systems, two threads that relate to goal six. So before we step into Saudi Arabia, I'd like to speak to another threshold as we move into the age of Aquarius with a biblical quote, behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters. So just ponder for a moment. Who are the water carriers within the cities? It's the water companies. And what might they be doing within their house or organization that is of most significance to this new age? Perhaps we are being called to pay attention to what goes on in the house of the water carrier. Did you know that the pilgrimage site Mecca was founded on the story of water? The story goes that Abraham's son was left by his mother but he searched for water, only to return to find at a child's feet a miraculous spring of water. The holy water called Zamzam continues to flow, making Mecca the largest active water temple in the world. Imagine the meditative power of 1.8 billion Muslims focusing prayer on this site five times each day. Talking to the water engineers, the spring is fed by three underground aquifers. Water under pressure changes its property. It is known by water dousers as spiritual water as it aids health, energy and vitality. Zamzam is bottled and monitored by the National Water Company, distributed locally for pilgrims to take home. Now, if you wondered why the pilgrims walk seven times anti-clockwise around the Kaaba, they're following the, the spiral energy field caused by the vertical movement of spring water and pressure. This water-induced energy spiral is known to condition and expand the qualities of consciousness, making this place a place of spiritual revelation. I also learned that in times of drought, the king calls the country to prayer. So just imagine for a moment the media frenzy if a certain prominent Western political leader called people to prayer for water. So what does that say about our Western society and our spiritual relationship and perceptions of water? So on the other extreme is the capital city Riyadh. What was once an oasis is now populated by over 5 million people. Drinking water is imported in plastic bottles. 50% of the water is desalinated from 500 kilometers from the Gulf. One result of which is the concentration of salt plumes that damage the Gulf ecosystem. 40% of water is drawn from deep ancient water wells, unable to be replenished. 70% of water is wasted, not being captured because of decades of underinvestment in the sanitary water system. The wadis, the valleys are dry, Ground pollution from cesspits continues. They have doubled the average global water use per head of population and a legacy of high water intensive farming strategies such as beef. This within a culture where water is the foundation of life and religion. On one hand, water is venerated. On the other hand, undervalued, underused and a waste of precious resource. This within a country having benefited from over 50 years of vast economic resources from oil. So the crux of the issues go deep into how organizations and governmental systems function, plan, make business cases and think. In essence, it is an organization issue coupled with the governing financial systems that value money and profit over all else. Often the easy option is the big business option. For example, Global companies with the power and resources to influence decision makers offer attractive solutions for parts of the system that can be easily monetized. It leaves other parts of the system underfunded and underdeveloped. One example is the drive for more water through investment in desalination schemes and power plants to generate more water, but create more problems because of silo thinking and continued waste. Another example of non-systemic thinking and policy making is bee farming. In a desert environment, it creates huge demands for water to grow grass, to feed, and even showers to keep the, cool, the cattle cool. The issues are complex, systemic, and multifaceted.
it can be misleading to generalize. Saudi Arabia is only one example. However, this example offers core insights into the issues faced within most water systems and companies. That's namely, water is significantly undervalued. Its potential is not understood by contemporary society. Meditatively, the spirit of water is caged within the bondage of old human organizational forms and thinking, such as the financial system, old ways of thinking, planning, managing, functioning, and decision making. It is our gift to liberate the spirit of water and invite it into the human kingdom. Imagine new organizational forms that facilitate and nurture the essence of clean water throughout an entire ecosystem, clean water for all. As the Aquarius and seventh ray cycles continue to manifest, what goes on in the house of the water carrier may be of particular importance to pay attention to. Thank you for your attention, and I now hand over to Shelley. Greetings, and Thank you for this powerful work you are doing in support of planetary healing and transformation. <clears throat> it's a privilege to be with you here as we gather today to vitalize the sustainable development goal of ensuring the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all and bring it into being in its fullest manifestation into a world where all humans all animals and all parts of the web of life have access to natural, uncontaminated water as nature intended. In this context, and the context of the extraordinary planetary configuration in which we find ourselves, I'm delighted to share with you the synchronicity of the focus of this group with a public launch on June the 24th of a global initiative for a world water law and World Water Year 2021. The launch of these initiatives will take place at the heart of World Unity Week, a global event focusing on unifying humanity in service of all of life. The World Shall Water Law. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, can you please share your screen? I will in a minute when I move to. Okay. Ah, okay. Th sorry, thank you. The World Water Law is the first global initiative towards the implementation of Codes for a Healthy Earth, a whole system framework for new ways of organizing ourselves as a species. So I would like to begin by reading out the precise proposal for a world water law and then invite you into a meditation in support of the healing of our planetary waters through the lens of the Sustainable Development Goal and specifically SDG 6. So I invite you to uh, read the law with me as I share with you this precise proposal, which is going to be launched uh, on Wednesday globally. The World Water Law Towards Radical Whole System Healing. The escalating social, health, and environmental crises are a stark wake-up call for all of humanity to act on our shared needs and priorities, our personal health, healthy, supportive and resilient families and local communities, local access to our basic necessities, and a healthy world for ourselves, our children, and for all of life. The global and rapid response to the pandemic has shown the world that it is possible for governments to coordinate around a shared crisis and for citizens to change their behavior in a very short space of time. Our next step as interconnected and interdependent citizens of Earth is to ensure that this global response is not limited to containing and treating symptoms. With the far-reaching impact of the virus, humanity is faced with an unprecedented opportunity for a global reset to put in place new foundational laws and systems that proactively cultivate the health and vitality of the planet and all its inhabitants for generations to come. The most efficient, 
and holistic strategy for restoring both human and environmental health is to prioritize the healing of our planetary waters, the foundation of health and the source and sustenance of all life on Earth. As humanity evolves to recognize the essential rights of nature, we are now called to stand for the right of water to be protected and restored to its original pristine nature. So this is the world water law as we propose it. We, citizens of Earth, call for and commit to working together to ensure that a binding international law is put in place for the immediate and universal protection of all water as the first vital step towards global cooperation for effective worldwide social and ecological healing. The world water law requires the uncompromising protection and restoration of all natural water sources, watersheds, aquifers, rivers, lakes, wetlands, estuaries and oceans. The rewilding of ecosystems necessary for the restoration of the planetary water cycle and the guaranteed free access of all humans and animals to natural uncontaminated water. The world water law holds all governments, corporations, communities and individuals fully accountable for their impact on all waters everywhere. This one law serves as a unifying foundation for all governments and citizens to work together with community-led wisdom and stewardship councils in ways that effectively serve the health and vitality of the whole. This global initiative honors the many water guardians around the world who have dedicated their lives to the protection and reverence of water on behalf of all of life. And so as we move from the uh, law into a global meditation, I'll ask you to share the uh, crystal um, of the Ubuntu, the Ubuntu crystal that was um, given for the use of the World Water Law by the Ubuntu Wellness Center. The, uh, this is a crystal that Dr. Imoto created for the word Ubuntu. And it was gifted to the stewards uh, of the crystal, Dawn and Ian McFarlane. So, um, so this is an, this meditation. Um, let us call it the healing water, healing the world meditation. And as we now enter this guided meditation, let us begin by settling into a comfortable position. Gently closing our eyes and breathing softly into the fluidity of the in-breath and the out-breath. And inviting into the field the essence, the frequency of vital, pristine water. And with love and gratitude for water, we call forth the best of all possible futures for all of life into the present moment. A thriving world of right relationship with water. Of right relationship with all of life.
and following the fluidity of the breath, we invite the waters to bless us with the purity of the original vibration of the waters of source. so that we may learn to love and honor and serve water, the source and sustenance and medicine of all life. And remembering and honoring our watery origins in the womb of mother, in the womb of all life, we connect to the watery realms within us and beyond us to the pure waters of source. And as we offer our loving, healing attention to water, we notice ourselves responding with fluidity, with vitality. And in the silent attention, we listen to this ancient cosmic intelligence informing the new consciousness and the new global reality that is being birthed on earth at this historic time. And we connect with the omnipresence of water, with our dependence on water, with the life intelligence of consciousness in fluid form, liquid light, responsive to our very thoughts, to our intentions, to our behaviors. And in the watery interconnected realms, every thought matters. And so we dedicate ourselves to healing our relationship with water. To learning from water how to love all of life how to nourish life, how to birth life, how to heal life, how to take care of life. And we are nourished and healed by the waters. And we nourish and heal the waters with our love. We feel the love of the sun and the water coming together in the rainbow spectrum of light between earth and sky. with a promise of peace and harmony with all of life. And we see the people aligning with the waters of source, remembering this ancient wisdom clearing and purifying noise from the system, from our consciousness.
and the water that knows no boundaries shows the way forward, teaching us of our interconnectedness, our interdependence, our mutual accountability, and our shared destiny. And in the foundational recognition of water as the unifying force of life that connects us to each other, binds us inseparably with all of life, we awaken to the opportunity to begin anew. Rebirthing ourselves as a life enriching species aligned with the intelligence of nature. And in rebirthing ourselves from the womb of creation, we are nourished by the waters of Mother Earth, the cosmic waters of Source. And as we love the waters, so love expands around Mother Earth. For loving water is loving life. And the waters respond to this loving prayer and bring into human consciousness a new clarity, the life intelligence of unity and harmony in radiant, thriving diversity. And from this new clarity, we see an ancient law return to human consciousness. One law that supersedes all other laws. The law that ensures the protection, restoration, and rebalancing of the waters to their natural, pristine state, so that all humans, all animals, all species have abundant access to the pure waters of life, as is nature's way. We recognize that the healing of all else, everything, begins with a collective healing of our waters. With each of us playing an essential part in this process as guardians of future generations, as guardians of all of life. And let us take a few moments to envision the future in the now, where all oceans and rivers, streams and lakes and all water sources are pristine and vibrant and the pure vital waters flow once again in balance and harmony for all of life and all humans and all animals and all species of abundant access to pure, vitalizing water.
And so we, women, men, and children come together as an evolving caretaker species to use the wisdom that has been distilled from our challenges as a springboard for a new era of living as a conscious species in service, in mutual nourishment, in right relationship with all of life. And we love water and thank water and bless water. And this and with this offering, we return to that sense of the fluidity of the breath. feeling into the fluidity of the air as it informs our body, as it breathes through us, vitalizing, loving, cleansing, opening, communicating among all parts of our being. And with this sense of profound love and gratitude for water, we gently begin to open our eyes and bring this blessing we share, this love we share into action, into co-creating a thriving world for all of life. And as we gently transition from this meditation, I'm going to share a song that was written for this moment of time. So I apologize that the, this was stopped in the middle. And uh, you get a sense of this song. Uh, so over to you. Hello? 
Thank you, Shelley. Um, yeah, we, we do. Sorry, we may be able to catch it again, but uh, um, yeah. For all life, we now unite, serving, listening, learning, giving, honoring the liquid life. Thanks, Shelley. We got to flow through to the end after all. <laughs> um, there's already a note in the chat box from Frida. So this is the time, everyone, um, where we come to our, our discussion and the opportunity for us all to share together um, about thoughts and impressions that may have come from the meditation and the um, words that this that speakers have given us today um, so yes there's already a message in the chat box from Frida saying um, not a question but I just wanted to share that during the meditation we went from sun to cloud to light rain and now a downpour great job at invoking the waters <laughs> So oh, yeah, if anyone has any thoughts, perhaps we just sit for a little while with what we've experienced through through all those offerings. Mm, yeah, thanks for that, Rebecca. And thanks for that comment, Rita. I'd love to go into the silence for just a moment with and integrate all of this. As we 
stay in the silence, I suggest us to think about the water sources near us and seeing them clean and pure and any sacred sources that we had a privilege to be connected with. And that's such a beautiful way to connect, to think about our, our own localities. So just inviting anyone who might think to share um, that you can raise your hand or type into the chat box if you'd like to share about the water in your location or any impressions from, from what we've heard here. And um, just wondering if any of the focalizers would like to share any any further thoughts or responses to hearing each other today Uh, hi, it's uh, Katja Kaufman, New York. Hi, Katja. Uh, hi. As uh, we were blessing the water and uh, we're connecting with the sacred and uh, local sources, just uh, the image of uh, Ganga River came to to me. Ganges. Ganges. I'm sorry. In, uh, in English, Ganges. And um, I remember we traveled up in the north, and it was uh, truly sacred, pristine water. Cold in a way that is not the temperature of the water, but the vibration that was cleansing, informing, saving, healing. And um, then um, when it comes to the point when um, Varanasi, Benares, right? It becomes different. The water becomes so dense. It's, uh, we were in the boat there and it was almost impossible to put your hand in the water. It was not inviting at all. And then this to me, the symbol of the accumulation that the water cleanses from us. And um, today is a good day to precipitate the ways of solution, how to, um, to remove that density of human waste um, or impurities back and um, appropriate it differently from the water to, to have a clean, clean, um, clean cutlet finish, you know, in many ways. So it is a very good time, you know, we are in, uh, in cancer and uh, in a special moment in cancer when we can really close the door uh, to the past and uh, look forward and invite the future so the the qualities that did not serve in the past would become educational for us 
So thank you. That that's um, that's my sharing. Mm. Thank you, Katya. I see Frida has her hand up, Alexander. Hello, everyone. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. So thank you to everyone who made the presentation. Um, Katya was talking about India. I uh, once had the privilege of going to India, and I uh, was doing a presentation there during uh, Airway Suck, which was in May. It was very, very hot. and. Uh, like 45 degrees and it was in the sort of the dry season and uh, I did my my talk on on water it was about blessing water and so on um, and uh, everyone said come 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 look because we were in a closed sort of theater and it had started to rain so very similar to today where you can I think water is very responsive to our love and our blessings and uh, responds by saying yeah thank you thank you and that was another example of that. So thanks, everyone. Thank you, Frida. <laughs> um, there's, I just noticed there's a question um, from Yoka. Um, is it possible to forward, um, is there a petition around the water law? Um, or she's asking um, whether that can be forwarded to us somehow. So maybe um, Shelley, um, could send us a link that where we could post in the chat box or you could post a link in the chat box for us, Shelley? Uh, yes, absolutely. There is a petition which is already live and uh, we will be bringing it, uh, uh, that will be launched publicly on Wednesday uh, during World Unity Water Day, which is a whole day that uh, is curated and dedicated to water. And we'll put the link in here now. Brilliant. Yeah, it, it's um, beautiful. If I could speak. Oh, yes. Darcy, is that you? This is Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina. Hi. Um, from the, I mentioned in the desert where there is hot and a bit of a drought in recent years and fires are burning have been burning much much acreage i'm not very good at keeping up with the numbers for two weeks now and um, in terrain that is very very difficult to access because it's very wild rocky you know mountain goats live there um, and it has been burning, as I said, for at least two weeks. And so I guess I am asking for water thoughts to be sent this way. It's right up here against um, in the mountains and the desert. It's a, it's a very, very terrain, our Arizona desert. And um, Tucson city snuggles against the mountains. I mean, people have been on alert. People have been evacuated. So, Frida sent water. That's all I'm asking for water. Thank you. And thank you for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Maria Cristina. You can feel those thoughts coming your way. I see uh, Jillian's hand is up. Uh, Jillian, if you could please unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, drinking water and water for sanitation shouldn't be used as a for-profit product and that maybe governments should be responsible for providing uh, drinking water and water for sanitation for all their people at the least possible charge and preferably free. Thank you for the presentation.
Mm, thank you, Jillian. And Darcy has her hand up also. Greetings, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful presentation um, to each of you. Thank you. Uh, deeply grateful for what was brought in the vision and consciousness of the water of life. And I have, if I'm able to share with you, Darcy, we've lost you. For some reason, your microphone went muted again, Darcy. It's unmuted, so. Yes. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes. We can't hear you now, though. Your mic went uh, muted again. So I know we spoke of building a telepathic infrastructure during the naming circle. So if we all focus on that now, Darcy calling in Darcy. I'm here. <laughs> okay, I'm here, dear ones. I wanted to share with you the sound of water that I recorded um, of the creek here, uh, about a half a block from my home. Um, and I'm not able to share it, but um, the gift that was given today and the visual, I too. Uh, was able to connect with the source of the Ganga uh, uh, figuratively when I visited and I went there and was taken there during the meditative vision that was given to us by Shelley and also was able to connect with the water of space itself and so to each um, of us that were participating today. Um, thank you and uh, deeply, deeply appreciate the gift that was given today. Thank you, Darcy. And Tara has um, put in a comment saying the music of water, which sounds a little bit like Maybe you were experiencing, Darcy. Um, did you want to say something, Tara? Yes, I would. <clears throat> Water, of course, has a deep story to tell. And it is caught by many <clears throat> musicians and people throughout the world, such as a beautiful song that we heard today. But think about it. Uh, I've held water from the great glaciers in the Himalayas and realized it was the Brahmaputra that would turn into the Ganges and so on. Think of the music, the water music of, of England and uh, also the Maldal of uh, the great music of the water that runs through uh, Austria. So, Think about the music of water. And then as the water flows from your stick, from the spigot in your rooms next time, for a moment, listen to the sound of water and even hold some other than washing your hands. Hold water in your hand for a moment and then send it on its way. It will eventually, eventually, with the work of all of us and the gods itself through the cycle of water will be purified. All blessing on the water of life. Thank you, Tara.
So there's also a comment here from Jörg um, um, saying we can use less water in our daily life and treat water more consciously. It is easy to do this. So um, I just wanted to bring in on a practical level, um, you know, we're here, we've, we're so much hearing about the effect of our consciousness upon water and um, the beautiful crystals of um, Dr. Emoto that were shown during the um, focalizing of the session. Um, and I just wanted to um, just put into the mix the work of Victor Schauberger um, and Johann Granda and um, Victor Schauberger the, um, I think he was an Austrian um, woodsman actually. And what he did was he listened. So it was the two way, the two way communication. He, he listened very strongly and deeply to water and um, came to understandings about how it flows and how it is vitalized and how it um, sustains its life as water. Um, and developed technologies um, to and understandings about how we can do things in our in the way we manage water. Um, so I just wanted to put that in there because it's a beautiful example of listening and a very great depth of knowledge that came from his work that could be applied um, if this water law becomes something that um, is adopted then this could be one of the practical methods that could be, could be used. Um, and Gillian Douglas has a comment here, water has great power. Think of angry seas or waterfalls and rapids. And then Betty is saying during the song, she had impressions. We as individual drops of water form the ocean of humanity. Mm. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. And Rebecca, as you're reading those and sharing about Victor Schalberger, it makes me think, Shelley, you mentioned um, briefly that this Wednesday, June 24th, is World Water Day during World Unity Week. I wonder if you could just say a few words to us about how we might participate, because we know you have many um, speakers and presenters, water guardians from around the world, and uh, folks like Victor who will be uh, in that Zoom room, maybe share that link with us so we can check it out if we want to um, listen to any of that or receive the recordings afterwards. Thank you. Um, so thank you, uh, Dart. Yes, um, we will share in the uh, in the chat, the actual schedule for uh, World Unity Water Day. There is a, a variety of um, events during that day, sessions that are open to the public, and uh, it ranges from actually even a presentation of Mr. Nomoto from the Emoto Institute. He was the chief scientist there, and he will be presenting. There's another, uh, Dr. Gerald Pollack at some point will be presenting. There's going to be present uh, sessions which focus more on the activism part from a, uh, the Re-Earth Initiative. There will be sacred um, ceremonies uh, and there will be uh, music. There will also be a panel, a, a group of uh, women leaders who will be putting forward uh, the proposal of the World Water Law into the world. And I'm delighted that DART will be among them. Uh, and after that, there will also be a session, uh, which will be an open space session, where anyone who um, would like to uh, to offer a session on how we can uh, 
uh, advance the adoption and implementation of the codes can uh, can do that. So there's there's a variety of ways, and we just invite you to take a look at the um, at the uh, link that I put into the chat, and you can see it also on our website, uh, which is the world, uh, which is the Codes for a Healthy Earth website, where you can also see the uh, petition that we shared earlier. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just wondering if Glenn and Antonetti, if whether you have any comments or responses. Rebecca, I was thinking while I was doing some research on uh, finding information about water and the talk. And I stumbled across an experiment where a blood sample was taken from a patient who has had a disease. And they were putting it under a microscope. And then an hour later, the patient were given some water to drink, but the intent was put into the water for the patient to heal um, whatever else was put in there. When they took another blood sample again, they could see the phenomenal change within the, the structure of the blood, mm. how healing was already taking place. So um, we've got so much power <laughs> in our hands and this cancer solstice and eclipse has been very instrumental in eclipsing that which does not suit or serve us anymore and into the essence of the intent using water as a medium for healing thank you thank you I want to invite now Avon Mason to share. Um, it's um, a little bit technical um, challenge as uh, Avon is on my phone now, so we will try to do that. But uh, Avon, before I invite you to speak, can you please uh, first mute your main device that you listen in the webinar now to avoid sound reverberations and then that you could hear me only through the phone. Uh, hi, Evan. Yes, hello. I had to turn off the, the telephone, the other telephone. I'm just infinite gratitude to everyone who's the, the main presenters today, the beautiful meditation, and also to all the very um, very significant conversation and comments that have since come. And I'm not able to refer to it at the moment, but um, number 6.6 .6 of the goals speaks to the protection of all the waters, including the aquifers, etc. And I was specifically reminded uh, when the evening before our call uh, with the World Unity Week yesterday with mostly indigenous, indigenous voices from around the world, and it is to remember to give gratitude every time we hold water, that we imbibe water to our bodies, and what the main message was from so many different perspectives is that the right role of humanity is real relationship, and right relationship is what is spoken of so often today is right relationship, not only with, uh, with, with each other, but also with the earth. And to remember that as with our, our own bodies, it's over 70% water, and that water is found everywhere in the sustaining of life, even within rocks, and that we have to remember that all life is sacred, and that our, our role is to live in sacred respect of water, because this is the only grand experiment that is known of that has water of life that's 
things on a physical plane level, the um, exquisite manifestation of life and beauty in the particular interrelated way that this particular planet does. So, infinite gratitude. Thank you, Evan. I hope the sound was enough to hear. Yes. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, grateful for that, Evan. And as you well know, uh, what's happening this week uh, with World Unity Week is a lead up to the International Day of Peace. Uh, and there will be a, a unity caravan actually across the U.S. from Grace Cathedral uh, at the end of August, right through uh, early September and ending up at the United Nations uh, and in New York, obviously, for the International Day of Peace, September 21st. So the, yeah, there's a real movement and it, everyone mentioning the word flow uh, has very much to do with uh, as we are moving fully uh, in Aquarius now, this water of life, and really, we are really landing that realization. Uh, thank you. I think uh, Maria Cristina has raised her hand again. Uh, Kina, if you would like to share anything, please unmute yourself. Um, two thoughts, really. One is I would share uh, a meditation once upon a time that I was drawn into when hiking in Alaska near glaciers in temperate rainforests with pristine water melting, with glaciers calving. For as we know, the, the climate change or the warming of the planet is releasing this incredible, beautiful, pristine water that became really the waters of Hercules. Pristine waters flowing into the planet and helping cleanse the stables, and um, which, as and as this water comes, there is a receptivity, as has been indicated by many who have spoken just now, and which leads me to a second thought that there has now been research on water that have shown that the there the surface tension of water is made up of a liquid crystalline structure and much thicker than had been previously um, realized and well, uh, i don't recall and i think it's positively charged whereas that water underneath that water tension crystalline structure one is positive and one is negative so that it creates an electromagnetic field that transmits information, literally transmits and imprints the water. Light imprints the water through this um, building material after all. So I build a lighted house and therein wells, dwells really does apply to these physical levels of um, manifestation that we are capable of influencing in the ways of thankfulness and beauty thank you 
can call me. Um, hi, it's uh, Katya again. <clears throat> um, thank you, Kina. What you said actually reminded me of what I experienced because yesterday I was doing water blessing for our ceremony. And uh, the image that came back to me was that the water is the information. And uh, once doing the dry fast, at the end of that dry fast, that's exactly what I realized, that it's not just a nurturing force, not a living force, but it also, it is a great life informing agent. And if we make a connection with the astral plane, which is the water, if we think about the cleansing of the astral body, of the thought, of, of, of the emotional body of humanity, it is the same problem that we have there, that there are, there are things that we don't know how to utilize just to bring them into emotions, just creating the same path of um, recycling those you know forces it's also will help with the with the clean, cleansing of the water and returning to the healing healing power you know in every indigenous you know i think culture has the springs that are sacred the places of water that are sacred there the, it, it is there it's the the divas that guard it you know they are there they're just uh, patiently awaiting i think Thank you. Thank you, dear friends. As we come close to the end of the time located to this webinar, I want to pick up the threads uh, from Dot, reminding us about Aquarian age and the waters of life. In many sense, we are now live in transitional moment and the doors to the old close and the new doors are open for the new future that we build and we are called to build the aqueducts for water to create those streams for water distribution to go to the all the corners that it would be available to all living creatures on earth and it's literally but also esoterically speaking, occultly speaking. I want to invite us to think about different avenues through which each of us and all our groups become the aqueducts of water of life. I suggest we start thinking about those different initiatives that we as trained as a terrorist, trained, trained meditators can take responsibility to focus. Now we are in the, at the end of the third cycle working with the sustainable development goals. We have one more new moon webinar scheduled for end of july and then that would be the seven the last goal in the third cycle as we go the, around the circle of each um, uh, 17 goals and then the new field of unknown opens up for us the new unknown field of potentialities so far, we're thinking about having an open forum in Leo and probably in Virgo new moons where we could come together and share 
about how we can use the magical time of new moons, time of manifestation of high potencies of meditative energies, how we can use this cycle of new moons together. So that would be uh, our transition in time when we invite us to reflect and think what can we take forward. And meanwhile, we invite you also to start uh, thinking about uh, your own initiatives, your own uh, small groups initiatives that you could start. Uh, and we call in it Creative Labs. We announced this uh, new uh, chapter uh, during our open forum in Gemini, and I want to invite you again to think about the topics that really deeply resonate within your heart, the topics that your soul is guiding and sometimes kicking you, uh, that you will wake up to the responsibility to manifest exactly you to manifest the topic. So if you have that call or that kick, uh, please bring it forward, share it with the community and see if anyone else gets the similar kick and similar uh, call to work on the same idea. And then two of you or three of you, or maybe 23 of you will start working together and the 2025 initiative will offer all this is technical support and logistical support uh, for you to uh, uh, work together. But that would be your own initiative, that would be your own call, that would be own rhythm and focus that your group will decide. So in this time, as we pass through the gates of incarnation, the cancer solstice, we invite you to link deeply with your soul and listen. And following our tradition at the end, I announce our next webinars and the next solar festival webinar will be with David Spengler. And in the cycle of cancer, we invite us to reflect on etheric living, how we build the lighted house for us, for our communities, and for the planet, how we live as etheric beings who we are. And in the second Cancer New Moon, yes, this year we have two new moons in Cancer, and this will be our last webinar in this cycle focusing on sustainable development goals. We will focus on goal three good health and well-being so take that to your meditation and bring your focus preparing for the next new moon in a month time thank you over to you rebecca thanks sasha So as we close now, I'm just reminded we have, we've spoken a lot about flow um, and I just wanted to bring forward the, the sense of tides as well and these tide of the year and the, the um, solstices and equinoxes and the tides of the moon that we're working with and recalling the um, words of Basilius Valentinus who um, said something like every time the tide rolls in it brings a blessing with it. So um, let's invoke blessing as we close today and may the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts through our groups and throughout the world. <laughs>